We have been using endovenous laser therapy as an alternative to conventional crosectomy and stripping for almost 20 years now. And over time, the diode lasers used, as well as fiber technology, have changed considerably. So I think it's fair to say that this resulted in EVLT becoming the new golden standard for truncal varicose vein treatment. And therefore, I would like to show you how we perform this procedure nowadays. We use a compact 1417 nanometer diode laser in combination with a slim double ring radial fiber. In our experience, this leads to excellent results when it comes to efficacy, reliability and postoperative pain. In most cases, we perform this operation on a spinal or general anesthesia, although local anesthesia can be an option too. Peroperative ultrasound is one of the cornerstones of this procedure and in my opinion also one of the reasons for the superior results of endovenous treatment. In the first place I would like to show you how we treat an insufficient greater saphenous vein. To get started we put the patient in anti trendenburg position to improve visualization of the veins. This way there is no need to use a tourniquet. The most tricky, but also the most exciting and rewarding part of EVLT is getting access to the vein by ultrasound guided puncture. Once you are familiar with that, I am convinced that whatever you can see, you can puncture. So we not only treat an insufficient greater or smaller saphenous vein, but if necessary, also medial and lateral accessory saphenous veins or Giacomini veins. So smaller side branches, especially in the upper part of the greater saphenous vein, are marked by a step incision and interrupted by a phlebectomy later on. Personally, I'm convinced that this reduces the risk of failure of obliteration of the GSV by prohibiting residual flow. When it comes to getting access to the vein, there are four important steps. First, choose a target. Second, aim. Three, strike. And four, hit. So, choosing a target first. Of course, the purpose is to treat the truncal varicose vein up to the point where the insufficiency ends. I always try to start a little lower. So in case of a failed puncture, I can still move a little bit up. Also using a superficial side branch to get entry to the saphenous vein can be helpful. My advice is to avoid the region around the knee and just above the ankle if possible. Because due to the bone, the free range for manipulating the needle is often too limited. Once you have determined the side of access, you have to aim. Put yourself in a comfortable position, take a seat, because being relaxed will help you. I prefer working out of plane instead of in plane. Often the vein starts moving a little when you approach it with the needle, and by working out of plane you will keep the vein in view at any given moment. Let your hand rest on the patient. This will give stability, it avoids excessive compression of the vein, and by compressing the vein proximal to the puncture site, you cause some extra venous dilatation. Finally, make sure the vein is in the center of the image. By puncturing in the middle of the probe, you should end up pretty close to the vein. Now we are ready to strike. I always use the same type of needle, as after some time you will become so familiar with it, you can almost puncture blindfold. Using a slim type of fiber, a 16 gauge needle catheter is sufficient. Yet I prefer a 14 gauge needle catheter to prevent any friction of the laser fiber and because of its stiffness. As you have to puncture at a very shallow angle, the best way to hold the needle is not holding it like a pencil, but grabbing it from above. Now we are ready to start puncturing at the center of the probe and about two centimeter distal to it. Now it's time to hit the target. In the first place, we try to end up just superficial to the vein 
with the tip of the needle. Never try to force the needle into the correct position. Pull back, correct the angle and try again until you have reached the correct position. Then incline the needle slightly to enter the vein and gently move the needle deeper and deeper, always following the tip of the needle by ultrasound. Finally, remove the needle not to cause perforation or hematoma with the needle. And keep in mind, don't try again and again if you don't succeed, as hitting the target will become more and more difficult. Just consider other places or ways to access the vein and try again next time. Make access first and tumescence later to avoid spasm and blurred view if you puncture at different places in the same leg. Puncture of a small saphenous vein can be performed perfectly in supine position. As mentioned before, we use a slim double ring radial fiber. Because of the design, power density of the laser light is low, avoiding carbonization of the catheter tip and a cascade of lack of energy transmission, extreme focal temperature rising, vein carbonization and perforation and fiber tip destruction. Advancing the catheter in general is very easy. If necessary, some external compression can be applied or the leg can be extended to facilitate this. Following the pilot beam can be helpful to locate the fiber tip. I prefer advancing the catheter slightly up into the common femoral vein and then pulling it back slowly until the right position is reached. As the action happens perpendicular to the catheter, it is possible to stay fairly close to the saphenofemoral junction without risk of harming the deep vein. Always make sure the catheter is in the right position over the whole length. In rare occasions, for instance, it can enter the deep venous system via perforator in the thigh. Finally, the catheter is fixated to prevent any further movement. And from this point on, the position of the leg has to remain unaltered. We use saline as a tumescent and add one vial of xylocaine with adrenaline. This is beneficial for postoperative pain control and improves interaction of the laser with the vessel wall by vasospasm. The tumescence is injected from distally to proximally. Looking for retroacoustic shadow can help to localize the laser catheter and moving around a little bit with the needle helps visualizing its tip. Try to inject the saline nicely within the saphenous sheath. There is absolutely no need to infiltrate the subcutaneous tissue with vast amounts of fluid. Before starting the actual laser treatment, the patient is put into Trendelenburg position. Now the diode laser can be activated. As a standard power setting, we use 8 watt and 70 joules. We perform a so-called laser crosectomy by waiting one cycle, meaning about 8 seconds, before starting to retract the fiber. Additionally, in the greater saphenous vein, we double the delivered energy for the first 10 cm by pulling back at half speed. The rest of the vein is treated by pulling back at a normal rate of one marker per acoustic signal. Don't forget to pull back the needle catheter in time. Also notice that the site of skin entry and the site of vein entry are not the same. So stop in time to avoid damaging the saphenous or sural nerve by lasering outside the vein. If necessary, additional phlebectomies can be performed. Finally, steer strips are applied and we use extra compression along the lasered veins. Those gauzes remain in place for 24 hours and can be removed by the patient. A temporary bandage is replaced by a compression stocking before leaving the hospital a few hours after the operation. Our postoperative regimen includes the use of paracetamol and anti-inflammatory drugs if necessary, early embolation and compression stockings for three weeks.